Adventures, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Matthew, the man with a hat, who reads. And it's time for another exciting episode of What Am I Waiting For? For those of you who are newer here and don't know what this series is, allow me to explain. So what the purpose of this series is, is I look back at a book haul from a year ago, go through it, pull out every book I haven't read yet from said book haul, and then talk about essentially what am I waiting for? Why haven't I picked these up yet? And how soon I might actually get to them. So we are looking back at the book call from May, June, 2023. It was a sizable book call. We had 21 books in that book call. Of those 21, there are, I eliminated out the James Bond ones I got because I'm not essentially counting them as part of my physical TBR yet because I'm still waiting to get all of them before I just start going crazy on them. So after I subtracted those out, plus all the ones I read, that left me with six books that I've not read yet and why I'm waiting for. So let's dive into those six. Starting with one, I'm just going to put a picture up over here because it's at the bottom of a stack and I don't want to dig the whole stack out. Um, James Rollins' The Starless Crown is the first in a series from him. I think there's two books in this series, I believe. I think there's just two. I haven't picked this one up yet, namely because I'm I'm just hesitant on it. Um, James Rollins is an author I've enjoyed. I really love his adventure action stuff, his Sigma Force series, his standalone action adventure novels. But when he diverts from that formula, I know this sounds bad, I sometimes don't care for it as well. Um, he did one with another author can't remember the name of the trilogy. I read the first two books in the trilogy. I think it was like the Blood Gospel and Innocent Blood. And those had some of that archaeological adventure stuff he does well, but it also had like vampires and it was weird. And I was not a fan of it. I, just, I mean, I didn't finish the trilogy. I've read the first two and then I never went back to it and I have no desire to go back to it. So I'm a little hesitant on Starless Crown for that reason. I doubt Starless Crown will have vampires and all that, but maybe it does. I don't know. I haven't read it yet. Um, I will get to it at some point. I don't know when. I'm going to try to get to it yet this year. Um, no, no. Might not be till November. I'll tentatively say November on that one because I do want to get that read this year. I mean, like I said in other videos, I'm trying to get the stuff that's been here the longest out of here <laughs> and get it read so I'm looking back more and more at these what am I waiting for's and my other book calls and saying okay that book's been sitting here a while I should prioritize that and so on so we'll say November on that next up is a movie novelization might as well say um of E.T. the extraterrestrial I want to read this at some point it's not terribly long i think it's like what 250 pages not even it is one i want to read i got this from my mother for my birthday last year and like i said i haven't picked it up yet and like i said it was it's probably a collector's edition i mean it's an old classic paperback and it looks like it's in really good shape i mean it's like in really pristine shape maybe it ain't worth anything i don't know I do want to read this. I am currently slotting this one in for Sci-Fi September with all those other books I have for Sci-Fi September, but I don't think I need to explain much about E.T. Everybody knows what E.T. is, right? Right? I'm not that old. <laughs> um, David Mitchell's The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoet, or Zoet, or Zoet, I never can pronounce that name. Um... What am I waiting for? Well, there's a real obvious thing, I'm, reason I'm waiting on this one, and that's because it's David Mitchell. It's going to be a heavy read. A lot of his stuff is good, but a lot of his stuff also takes a lot of, like, concentration to really appreciate, which is great. I'm no, nothing against that. Um, but, like, you have Cloud Atlas, which is a fantastic book, but you really need to be mentally ready for that. 
Um, same with, um, what was some of the other ones I've read by him? Oh, shoot, right here. Ghost Written was kind of like that when I read that one. Black Swan Green was a little bit more approachable, but I didn't love that book either. Utopia Avenue is really good, and it's not as heavy, but I have a feeling that this one is going to be heavy to actually just, like, take in. So I think that's the main reason I've been waiting on this one. As far as when I'm planning to read it, I've currently got it slotted in in August. Because, you know, I've already talked about trying to tackle Don Quixote, so why not take another heavy one on top of it? But I could be wrong. Maybe I'll just devour this thing. I haven't read a David Mitchell book in probably a good three, four years. When did Utopia Avenue come out? Anybody know off the top of their heads? That was the last one I read by him. So maybe this, maybe this will be great. Maybe I'll love it. I don't know. All right. Then we have E.E. E. Knight's Way of the Wolf, book one of the Vampire Earth. Welcome to the year 2065. Earth is under new management. This is the first in a series. I picked this up because it sounded interesting. It sounds like essentially vampires have come and establish a new world order on Earth. And harvesting enslaved human souls. Da 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 da. And it sounds like he's. They're going to war with it. Oh, here we go. Someone said, if the Red Badge of Courage had been written by H.P. Lovecraft. Okay. I'm, I know it's the first in a series. I've seen the second one at Half Price Books as well, but I haven't picked it up because I wanted to read the first one, see if it actually works for me. I'll be honest, this is one I just kind of forgot I had sitting around. <laughs> Because it's just so, the cover is really, it's not a bad cover, but it doesn't really, there's nothing really, like, unique about the cover. There's nothing that really makes it stand out. And then you look at the side, which is usually how I stack them, that really doesn't tell you anything. There's nothing on that spine. And I think that's the main reason. I think I just kind of forgot about it. So I honestly don't know when I will get to this one. Um... I'm not going to say sci-fi September. I have way too much for that month already. So I think this one I'll just kind of be on a wait and see. I'll maybe try to stick it in somewhere yet this year. Otherwise, it'll be early next year. Then we have Charlie Human's Apocalypse Now Now, which is a great title. And it has a really great cover. I mean, look at that. The skull reflecting in the glasses. I mean, that's just cool. But... Um, the main reason I picked this up is some of the blurbs on it, because the blurbs were from people like Chuck Wendig and Richard Cadry and Lauren Bukes, and I like all of those authors. I've read stuff by all of them and have liked all of them. And it's just, I mean, I don't know. It just sounds like something I would enjoy, kind of apocalyptic, end-of-the-world type stuff. It does have a sequel that... Again, I don't have because I waited to see if I liked this one, but I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to read this one either. This one probably will just... This is like Way of the Wolf. I'm going to try to get it in somewhere this year, but otherwise it might not be until next year early on. But this is one I want to get to. I've, got to, I've really got to just sit down and look through all my books and try to make a plan for the ones that have been here the longest. Fortunately, I get so many good new ones that I want to pick up right now. That's why it's been good to not be buying any new books this month so far. I know, as you're watching, this is only like, what, the 12th? So that's hardly, oh, you went 12 days without buying a book. <laughs> it's progress. Give me some credit. <laughs> the last one here we have is Scott Thomas's Kill Creek. And it's got like a nice creepy horror haunted house vibe. Just like the synopsis here just says it was supposed to be a simple publicity stunt. Four famous horror authors spending the night in one of the world's most notorious haunted houses. That just that's a great little premise right there. It doesn't really tell me anything else that this book's about except that it's a bunch of authors in a haunted house and bad stuff happens most likely. 
I mean, it just sounds good. And this one, I was going to wait and read in October of Horror, but I have a bunch of other stuff picked out there, so I'm actually moving this one up to August as well. I was going to read this last year in October of Horror, but I ran out of time. So this will be in August as well. So some of these that I talked about today, you're going to see more of here very, very soon on the channel. In less than a month, they'll be popping up in my TBR video. So that's the list that's like i said six books left from that book haul that i haven't read which is not bad i mean percentage wise that's not bad i got most of them read in the time of it's been so i don't know what do you guys think do you still like this series are there any of these books you've read that i should be pushing to the top of my list or do any of these sound interesting to you i'd love to hear from you in the comments down below thanks for watching and until next time keep turning pages